Hello everyone, my name is Kat, also known as astrogirl.au on Instagram and Facebook. I just thought that I would do a really quick video to demonstrate some of my editing techniques. Uh, we're going to be starting in PixInsight today and I will be editing my recent image of the Corinna Nebula. You guys may have seen that on Instagram. So a lot of what I do in PixInsight I've learned off YouTube from other people. Uh, definitely none of this is my own technique here. I don't utilize PixInsight to its full potential and most of the settings I leave at default. Um, so with that said, let's begin. I've already stacked this with uh, darks and flats in Deep Sky Stacker. I understand it can also be done in PixInsight, but like I said, I'm, I don't use this software to its full potential. So the first thing I do is I do a non-destructive stretch of the image using the screen transfer function, which you can find under process. Let's click this radioactive button and see what we're working with. Okay, so the image is pretty green. That's an easy fix. Uh, back in process, all processes and background neutralization. Drag and drop that triangle onto the image. Okay, and that's got rid of that green, so we'll close that out and just reset that stretch. Okay, you can see that there is still a little bit of green in the image. So we'll go up into processes and I'll go to SCNR and bring this down to about 50-ish, 55 is fine. Drag and drop that triangle and that has gotten rid of the rest of the green in the image. So we've closed that out, now we won't need that anymore. And the next thing I'll do is go to automatic background extraction and the correction I'm going to do is subtraction and click normalize, discard and replace. Drag and drop that triangle onto the image. Okay, so close that box out. So this is before, this is after. It's brought up a bit more nebulosity in the edges and it's gotten rid of some vignetting that was up there in the corners. So that's looking pretty good now. I think what I'll do is permanently stretch the image. There doesn't appear to be a lot of noise in this image, so I'm not going to worry about running any kind of noise reduction. If your image did have noise, you can go to script and easy processing and easy denoise. If you don't have that under scripts, you just have to jump and do an jump online and do an internet search and you can download that. So to permanently stretch the image, I go to all processes and histogram transformation. And then what we'll do is take the screen transfer result and drag and drop it onto the histogram transformation box. We can go ahead and reset that and then drag and drop the triangle onto the image to apply that stretch. Okay, so the next step I want to do is I work on some stars. So essentially what's going to happen is this will become my nebula image and this is going to become the star image. So I'll undo the stretch on this image and go to processes and we're going to do an arcs and stretch. So this box brings up the preview tool and we'll drag this up until we can see some detail. And then we're just going to bring that black point down. I think I can bring this up a little bit more. Because I pulled that off, I'll bring the black point up a little bit too. Oop, that just shows you that you're clipping. So just take it back a little bit. And the square box to apply that to the image. 
So that's done. We'll close that out and close that out. Now what we need to do is remove the stars from our nebula image and our arcs and stretch image. So to do that, we'll go process, all processes, done at two. And we don't need to create a star mask on this one because we're not keeping those stars. So just drag and drop that triangle onto the nebula. This does take a while, so I will pause the recording here. Okay, so Stun at 2 is finished on the image that will become our nebula. So now we just need to extract the stars from our arcs and stretch image. So to do that, I will create a star mask for this one and drag and drop that onto the arc and stretch image. So this will take a while again, so let's pause it and we'll come back to you shortly. Okay, so Darnet 2 has finished with the arcs and stretch image. We don't need this image, so we'll close that. I can see that some of these stars are a little bit green, so I'm just going to do another SCNR. Might just bring this down though. Okay, so you probably couldn't pick that up on the screen. So now it's time to save. So save star mask. Oh, why is it saving JPEG? That's not what we want to do. Save as tip file. And save our nebula image as well. Okay, so we're going to open these up in Photoshop. And here's one I prepared earlier, guys. Now let's close this, so I'll go through it with you guys properly. So there's the nebula, and there's the stars. First thing we'll do is work on the star image. So Control J duplicates the layer. Control U brings up the hue saturation box. And let's go to reds. Using the eyedropper tool, we'll just make sure that we isolate the correct color by clicking on it over here. And we'll boost the saturation. So let's adjust this until we get a nice golden color. And that looks beautiful. So hit OK. Change the blend mode to color. And add a little Gaussian blur just to make sure that there are no color artifacts on the image. It won't affect any detail. Um, control J to duplicate that layer. Control U for the hue saturation. Now we'll work on blues. With the eyedropper tool, we'll just select a blue star. And it's actually cyan. So boost the saturation and change this to a nice blue color that looks really nice and again we will apply a gaussian blur and i might actually just see if we can work on this star a little bit more so control j to duplicate control u for the hue saturation and using the eyedropper tool let's click on over here Okay, that's making it go the wrong colour. Just try that again. Okay. Okay, I'm not getting the color I want from that, so we'll just leave that as is, and we will flatten that down, and save, and we can close that now. Okay, so with this image, we'll work on color grading this nebulosity, Control J to duplicate the layer. And we will use curves and add a little bit more boost to the reds channel. So Control M opens up the curves box, and channel will go down to red. 
clicking here lifts the midtones. As you can see here, it's putting a little bit more red into the image. We're just going to do this moderately. Now we don't want it to be affecting the darker areas and the brighter areas of the image. So we'll use this pen tool and we'll click and drag down until that's a bit more neutral. And on the highlights, just a little bit. And okay, I might just do that process again. So we'll just make small adjustments. So we're going to go overboard. That looks really good. I'll just take that out of the shadows. Okay, wonderful. Now I'll just duplicate that layer again because we'll work on the saturation and the actual tone of the red. So boosting the saturation up to about 40 will do, I guess. This is obviously all personal preference. I want it to be a little bit more on the pink side and that looks really good. Okay, so Control E will merge those the top layer and the layer beneath it. And here we're going to change the blend mode to colour. And I'm just going to add a Gaussian blur. And that looks really good. So I will flatten the image completely and we can start work on some of the details. Control J again to duplicate that layer. And the first thing I will do is a high pass filter. So with this I tend to just lift up this ladder until I can see a bit of a embossed look on the image. And then change the blending mode to overlay. And this is before and this is after. If you think that that's a little bit too much you can always Reduce the opacity. That looks really good. So, Control E to merge that layer with the one beneath it. Control J to duplicate that layer again. And now we'll just do some sharpening. So, filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Okay. So, if I bring the radius up, it's obviously affecting it too harshly. We don't want those artifacts. So let's take that back down to about two pixels. That looked really nice. And the same goes with the amount. If you increase this, you can see again that it is starting to get a little bit with the artifacts, too much with the artifacts. So let's bring that back down. I think where I had it at about 250% looked really nice. There are other ways you can sharpen in Photoshop, but I like to use the Smart Sharpen. And that looks really good. So we'll flatten the image now. Save that as well. And then let's go back into Pixinsight where we can then combine these two images. So we don't need this. And we don't need this one. So this is the nebula. These are our stars. And the way that we're going to combine these is with pixel map. So open up expression editor. It's just the settings from before. So add Karina plus star mask and hit OK. Make sure that create new images checked and color space um, could have just left that same as target. If you were combining grayscale images into an RGB, you would select that and click the square button to start that process. Okay, that's done already. And this is the image with the stars. So the next thing I do is a deconvolution. And I don't play around with any of these settings. I just click de-rigging and I know that I'm 
probably not using this correctly. But it does sharpen the stars. If you don't select the D-ringing, sometimes you get halos around the stars. Generally, this doesn't take too long. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about deconvolution, there are other videos on YouTube. Okay, that's finished. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. And now this is before and this is after. You can see that the stars are a lot smaller and more pinpoint. And now what I will do is just go to script utility duck structure and head. And I'm just going to run this one time. It should pick up some of the darker structures out here. Okay, so this is before, this is after, see along here, in here, and down here. When I apply it again, it's just given those features a bit of a pop, which looks nice. And now just remove any kind of stacking artifact. We'll crop the image slightly. So I'll just pull this up a little bit. And again here. Okay, and hit the tick, close that out. And we're done. This is the final image. Like I said, guys, this is really quick edit just to show you guys briefly some of the processes that I do when editing my images. You can spend a little bit more time perfecting it um, and also like I said in the beginning I definitely don't use Six Insight to its full potential. Most of what I do I've learnt from watching other videos on YouTube but hopefully you've picked up something new. Um, if you like the video then hit the like button, leave a comment, uh, show me some support and I may produce another one, who knows. Uh, but that's it. Hopefully you found this one informative. Thanks for tuning in guys and I'll speak to you all on Instagram or Facebook.